Welcome to Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS and small bytes. Today we'll be covering ArcGIS Pro, creating layout files and what's new. Let's get started. Creating layouts in ArcGIS Pro can be relatively easy. Once you know how to navigate, and you know the new features and where the tools sit. We'll start with the layout ribbon. It's contextual based, so unless you have a layout created or a pre-existing open, you won't see it here up on the ribbon. It has the standard navigate tools, as well as orientation, and if you need to activate the map or use bookmarks. You'll also want to be familiar with the contents pane. You see here the name of our layout. You'll notice that there are lock buttons and checkboxes, and arrows that allow me to ungroup and group elements. So let's start with the lock buttons. They're a great way to restrict accidental movement of your elements. Each piece of my layout can be considered an element. If I unlock the box, then I can move my elements about. Notice how I can move my legend. In addition to reducing accidental movement, you can also reduce the amount of necessary guidelines. If I'm going to generate this layout as a template, and I know that I'm not going to be unlocking any of these elements, I may choose to remove these guidelines by simply right-clicking. You'll also notice that my legend element is selected, and now a contextual tab has popped up on my ribbon for legend. The same will happen if I click on map title for text. When I click these contextual tabs, I can then make additional edits and changes. Which brings me to our next topic, the insert ribbon. This ribbon allows you to insert the layout as well as other elements that belong to the layout. So why don't we close this layout and start from scratch? I'll navigate over to the insert ribbon and then select new layout where I'll see templates or the option to customize. Click OK, and it appears. If I want to set guidelines, I merely right-click, and if I select Add Guides, I can utilize some automated features to get myself started. Next will come the data frame. I'll navigate back up where it says Map Frame. You'll see that the maps existing in your catalog will be present, as well as their extents and bookmarks. Once selected, you simply draw and place your map. Returning to the Map Frame, you'll see a drop-down that lets you select different ways you can draw your frame, if you wish to have a circle or even a custom polygon. I'll just select a new bookmark and I can insert in, let's say for fun, a star shape. Varying with my art skills, you'll see that there's a lot of opportunity to make your maps dynamic and fun where needed. And while selected, I can easily use the delete key to remove this and move on. Your basic map elements, like North Arrow, Scale Bar, and Legend are also here in the Insert tab. There's also a wide variety of dynamic text, and you can even create some of your own referencing properties within the Pro Project. Your drawing tools are also here if you wish to create custom title boxes or other elements to your layout. In addition to the standard elements to a map, the Insert tab has even rounded up dynamic things like chart frames and table frames. A quick example would be I'd click the table frame and then draw where I might want that information. You'll notice that in the contents pane, the element will appear. And if I navigate to the element pane, I can then select a table from any one of my layers. From there, I can expand other options on what I want to show and even check out the properties of my fields. In addition to the element pane, the table frame has a ribbon that's contextual. And from there, I can make additional changes or even use these pop-outs to return back to the element and see more changes available to me. So let's recap. You begin at the Insert tab if you wish to create a new layout. From there, you can navigate your layout by going to the Layout ribbon. Once you've set your guidelines and your properties, you can return to the Insert tab and add in your dynamic text, your scale bars, and any other element you wish to add. To edit layout elements, navigate over to the Contents pane where you can lock and unlock, check and uncheck, as well as group your different elements. Returning to the original layout, you can see that this is a great starting point, but you can do so much more with layouts. If you have any questions or suggestions on how to use layouts, please add them in the comments below. This has been Tessel Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to visit us at www.tessellations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.